Hey everyone, this is Baylor and welcome back to creating a shopping cart in Rails. Today we are going to add a checkout system. Very, very simple. We're not going to get into too much. We just want to do very simple, just check out. And so I'm going to demo it real quick so you can get an idea so you know what you're looking at. Um, we're going to be seeing, I guess. Uh, we have our cart. We've added a subtotal here. I'm going to show this in this video so we can sum these up. We're going to Go to the checkout page we ask for our first name and last name we can fill this in and then when we hit checkout you can see that it goes back down to zero items and our order has been completed so the first thing we want to do is make our subtotal be more active so the first thing we have is that when we create the order we assign a subtotal of zero dollars but we never go back and update that another thing is that if right now we wanted to access our subtotal for our order we would have to go into our view and say something like current cart dot order dot subtotal and that's bad we don't want to have to navigate through multiple properties just to get to the subtotal so the first thing we'll do is we're going to define that we so the first thing we want to do to fix that is define a delegate and we're going to say subtotal it's going to delegate to our order and so that'll allow us to say shopping cart or current cart dot subtotal directly the next thing we want to do is we need a way that when we add an item to our cart or remove an item from our cart that we update the subtotal and so we'll define a new private method here we're going to call this update subtotal and inside of here we're going to say take our order assign the subtotal and make that equal to order items and we're going to sum the quantity times the price and then once we've assigned this new subtotal, we can just say order.save. And so now that we have this method, what we can do is we can hop inside of our add item method. And we're just going to say sub update subtotal. And then in like I'll do the same thing. When we remove our item, we're going to update the subtotal here as well. And the only thing we want to really make a change here is that if this save fails or this save fails, we don't want to have this weird disconnect in the database. And so what we'll do is we're going to wrap this inside of a transaction. So we're going to say active record base transaction. We're going to open a block and put these methods in here. And we'll do the same thing up here in our add item as well. And so this will just ensure that we have correct data whenever we add or remove an item. The subtotal and the item itself will be linked together. And so now that we've added this, we can hop back into our checkout view. Or I'm sorry. So now that we've added this, we can hop into our cart view. So here we are inside of our current cart. I'm going to go down to the bottom past our T body tag. And we're going to add a T footer or T foot. And we're going to add a single column here that is going to span the full width of this table. It's going to align the text to the right. And inside of here, we're just going to have a number to currency and say current cart subtotal. And so with this change, what we can do is hop back into our system. We're going to reset the database. We're going to add our first item here. And you can see it's added our item and then it's also added the subtotal as well. And so with this, we can go ahead and start working on the checkout process. So here we are in our routes file. We're going to define a route for a git and we're going to have a cart checkout. And this will go to an, a new orders action. And then we'll alias that as checkout so that we can just simply say checkout underscore path. We'll define another method for our patch. This also goes to cart checkout but this is gonna to go to the orders create method. Now we do have a little bit of weirdness here that we're using a patch action to go to orders create. This for me makes more sense, even though this verb is wrong because we are using existing carts or existing orders to act as carts. And so it, it makes sense that it goes to create since we're technically going to a new state. However, it makes more sense with our routing to use our patch. So with this, we need to go ahead and define our orders controller. So we'll do that real quick. And so here we are in app controllers, and then we're in orders controller.rb. And we need to create a class. It's going to be our orders controller class. And here it's an application controller. And inside of here, we're just going to define our new action. It's going to be a method called new. And we're going to have our order equal to, we're going to assign order, and it's going to be equal to our current cart.order. And so now we can go into our view file for this and we're going to define that we have an H2 for our checkout. We're going to use form four. So we're going to define a form to wrap our order. 
And this is why we use the patch route since this order does exist. Rails is going to default this to be method of patch. We're going to have our URL set to checkout path and we're going to assign this current instance or our form builder to F. And inside of here, we're going to add a div for our form group. We're going to add a label for our order first name, and we're going to add a text field for that first name as well. And then finally, we'll just do the same thing for our last name. So it's a label and a text field. And we'll come down here. We're going to add a submit tag, and this is going to have the name of checkout. So if we refresh this page, you can see that I've forgotten to add the checkout link. And so we need to do that as well. So I'll hop back into our cart path. So here we are in our current cart. This is where we added our table footer, and we're just going to add a link to checkout, and this goes to checkout path. And so now if I refresh this page, you can see that we have our checkout link. If we click on this, it's going to take us to the checkout page where we have our first and last name. And you can see the Rails form builder has gone ahead and made these labels with the four attributes so that as we click on them, they highlight the respective field. And so before we can actually submit this form, we need to also define our create action. And so we'll hop back into our orders controller and we're going to add a new method for our create and we're going to assign our order equal to our current card at order just like we've done before. And so this will allow us that if we have a failure, we can just render back to our new action and we don't have to reassign it anywhere else. And once we have this order, we're going to try to update the attributes on this order. And so we'll say order .update attributes, and we're going to use order params and we're going to merge that hash with a new hash for status and we're going to assign this to open. Now, we don't have this order params method, so we'll define that. So we'll just come down here and define a new private method called order params. And this method, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our request parameters. We're going to require that they're namespaced under order, and we're going to perm only permit the first and the last name. And so we're, we're allowing the user to only submit their first and last name, and then we're taking that, and on our end, we're merging that with a new um, status because like this is something we wouldn't want the user to do but it's okay that we can send our status and then once we've had once we've saved this we're just going to redirect back to our root path but if there's an error with this update attributes it'll return false and so we'll have an else and if it's false then we just render back to our new action so they can start the process over again now the only thing we're missing here is that we don't have an, a status column on our orders so we'll need to add that and we'll just go and add a new rails migration and so here we're just going to say rails generate migration. We're going to add our status to orders and it's going to be a status. And it's just going to be a type string. So we'll add this and I'm going to hop into this migration. And so when we add this status, we're going to have it set to default of cart. And then I'm just going to say order dot where the status is nil. We're going to update all of these and set their status equal to cart. And so by doing this, we'll ensure that new records will have a default status of cart. And we're also going to make sure that since we have some existing orders where their status hasn't been assigned yet, we're going to make those default to cart. And so now we can run this migration. So we're on Rails by Migrate. And you can see that we've added this new order status. And if we hop into our Rails console and look at all the orders, you can see that even though this was an existing order, it does have a status set to cart. So now we can go back to our application and we can try to check out. And I'm going to hit check out. And you can see it takes us back to our index action. But we did not actually clear out our current cart. And so the reason for this is we need to hop into our shopping cart model. And if you notice, when we find our order for our current order, all we care about is the token. We need to also say where the status is set to cart. And so we're using the status column to indicate whether an order is still a cart or whether it's open or delivered or fulfilled or canceled. But right now, the problem is that we're always just looking at the token and not the status. And that's also a problem because this token isn't changing after we submit our cart. And so what we can also do here is we can hop into our checkout controller, into our orders controller, and we're going to say if we save successfully, then we're just going to set our session cart token equal to nil. And so this will allow us to reset this and have a new cart token every time we submit an order. And so now if we try this, we hop back into our order items, you can see immediately it just cleared that out. And I'm just going to create a new order here just so that we can see this cart token work. And so if I hit checkout, you see it went down to zero immediately. And if we go and look at our database, we can say we want to look at all the items and we're just going to map that token. And we should see that these two are the same because we didn't reset it, but this one is different so that 
when we save an order, we do assign a new cart token. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please be sure to like and subscribe. This will probably be the last video on building a shopping cart with rails, unless somebody has something they want to see done specifically. I think from now on, I'm probably going to just make more generic rails tutorials and perhaps things that aren't even rails related at all. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, my name is Baylor Ray and have a good day.